whatever we can do to help industrial agriculture to lighten the load and to grow what we can closer to people, closer to markets, closer to neighborhoods where people would be consuming fresh veggies is going to be a win. Agriculture in LA is moving towards more small-scale operations. Some of the most productive spaces on the planet are no more than a thousand square feet. More and more things will just come from your backyard, processed locally, delivered next door. And so uh, helping any, any step in the way will be really, really exciting. There's a lot that goes into a farm that's not just the growing aspect. We really want to empower the farmer to be able to focus on growing the best produce that they can. Because I'm growing specialty crops, I can afford to focus on the quality. I'm thinking about specific customers who are going to want it. I'm thinking about making people excited when I bring it to the farmer's market. What we've done here is like created so much abundance and so much produce and really helped extract a lot of carbon from the atmosphere. So it's really proven that you can do a lot at a local scale. It's inspiring to me because it's encouraging people to simplify their lives, to go back to basics and to do the kinds of things that bring you joy and are close to home. We're in Sierra Madre, which is a suburb of Los Angeles. This is my backyard farm called Huarache Farms. Let's take a look. Huarache meaning sandals. I also like the name sandals because it makes me feel like we have a light environmental footprint. We're a small farm. We do almost everything with hand labor. Our mission is to try and promote environmentally sustainable agriculture. What inspired me to get into farming was I had this chemistry professor when I was going to school and he had this huge garden at his house that he would invite me to. It was kind of like one of the first interactions that I had with someone who was cultivating richness close to home. Sustaina is a software platform that we've developed to help farmers focus on growing the best produce that they can. Sustaina aims to optimize small businesses like my own. They're building an app which will help to connect neighborhoods with my farm so that they can order vegetables online and have it delivered to them. So it's a great way to make it easier for me, the farmer, to find people who want to buy vegetables. This is a half acre lot, but only about a quarter of an acre is under production. So that can be either salad greens like lettuce or stir fry vegetables like bok choy. What's so cool about Los Angeles is you can grow so many different things here. There's kind of an encyclopedia of nutritious leafy greens out there that you can find. We have so much sun here in LA. You could say we almost have too much. If you're in a cold climate like Canada, people will build greenhouses to extend the season because it's too cold. In Los Angeles, it's too hot most of the time. So we build shade houses. So a shade house is kind of one huge benefit that can help you grow vegetables by reducing intense heat. I also found that um, hydroponics works really well with the same arrangement. So you have shade above you and then you have water below you. I think what makes LA such an exciting place for local urban agriculture is that there are so many farms in the community and everyone has kind of different growing practices and there's still so much to learn from each other uh, in terms of growing different varieties and introducing a lot of new types of produce to your family and your neighbors. Once you get in touch with one backyard farmer, you can oftentimes get plugged into a network of others, many others. That can be a big part of learning about how to grow, what to grow. By collaborating with other people, I was able to realize that I could do so many things that I didn't realize I could do. 
technology can really help connect a lot of different homeowners and people who are interested in growing locally. I've heard that the third industrial revolution will be um, one of local economies. So I think, um, I think a lot of things are gonna rebound that way. What I think can really transform the landscape of Los Angeles is having lots of small farms that are well connected through software. It's almost like friends and family are sharing vegetables with each other, sharing good experiences with each other and good meals, cooking at home. I think we'll all be healthier for it in the long run. So in a hydroponic system, there's no soil, it's just water. And so all the minerals that a plant needs to grow, and there's at least 16 of them, need to be added to the water. And as you can see here, this lettuce is growing in a little cube, and roots are growing into the water. And you may notice that there's not a whole lot of roots. And the reason for that is because the minerals that the plant need are abundant in the water so the roots don't have to go very far to get what they need. A wicking bed is basically like a regular garden box, but what's special about it is that you can line it with pond liner, which is used for raising fish, and so by lining the inside of the box, that protects the wood from getting rotten. Plus, it holds water at the bottom. It doesn't just drain out. What I do is I, um, at the very bottom layer, I build a drainage pipe that runs along the entire bottom. I drill holes in the drainage pipe so that water can seep into it. The drainage pipe comes up for about six inches and then it goes out of the box. So that dictates um, a certain amount of water that can be held at the bottom, which is about one third of the bottom that can be filled with water. And then what I'll do is I will fill the bottom of the box with pea gravel, which is big and bulky. Second layer in the middle is sand, which is a little less bulky. And then the very top, very fine compost and peat moss. So if you imagine you're going from fine to coarse, and all your water is being stored at the bottom, as the soil starts to dry at the top, it wicks water up to it. And um, by doing that, you can use 90% less water. So some of the benefits of using a wicking bed is that um, it saves a huge amount of water. So for example, what if this was a garden box that was completely open at the bottom and the water just drained out? Then our vegetables would become thirstier for water much sooner. Basically, by having a wicking bed, I can water it just once a week, and the plants will have more than enough for several weeks. So I have mint growing here uh, in a wicking bed. This is perhaps one of the best specialty crops that I can grow in a wicking bed because it has plenty of water to drink all the time. If you have mint growing in soil that's rich enough and moist enough, it will grow so vigorously like a weed, which is why it's actually best to keep mint in a container because if you let it run wild on the ground, it will spread like wildfire. Um, it's a very vigorous plant. I love mint. Um, for a number of reasons because it's uh, it makes water taste good. I love to just grab copious bunches of mint and put it in a pitcher of water with some lemon juice and just keep it in the fridge. It'll make the tastiest water ever. This is actually just sweet mint. There are many different kinds of mint. But I like sweet mint because um, it's, uh, it's very vigorous and it tends to not have any problems. I've had this mint in this a wicking bed for the last six years, and it just keeps growing back every four weeks. It's good.
So if you've had success with sprouting or growing mint at home and you want to take your farming game to the next level, try tree collard. So why is tree collard great? Well, for one, it's a perennial, which means that it's long lived and you can non-destructively harvest it for up to 10 years. This is actually a small tree collard that's young, but when it's, when it's matured, it can be as, as much as about eight to 10 feet tall. You can keep cutting it as much as you need it for at least a decade and the leaves will just keep growing back. So this is a really great way to have a cut and come again garden that is a lot less work and is more about just harvesting for what you need. You can break the leaves off pretty easily. You can eat it just like kale, chop it up, saute it in some olive oil and garlic. Easy. So good. A specialty crop is any vegetable, fruit, or anything really that tends to be high value and it's not mass produced. When I think of corn and beans, I think of that as a staple vegetable, low value, relatively inexpensive, still very important. But when I think of a specialty crop, I think of small production areas, such as a backyard. Traditional agriculture right now has really worshipped the monoculture, whereas urban agriculture basically is the exact opposite. It's a complete polyculture. He's got more species here than I would say most thousand acre farms would, just on his half acre. What's interesting about a Los Angeles farmer's market to me is that it's so multi-ethnic and there are so many different cultural cuisines that call for specific vegetables for each one. So I'm kind of like in the middle of all of it and I'm learning from so many different cultures about what's good. I never liked lettuce when I was a kid and as soon as I started growing it myself, I couldn't believe how much I liked it. And I started to realize that a lot of it was because I was growing it really fresh and I was eating it almost like right out of the ground. The customers I have, they thank me so much for what I do all the time. It's another thing that drives me to do more. It made me feel kind of like a superhero. I put on my farmer's hat. I'll wear like my Henry David Thoreau shirt. It's like I'm wearing a costume, but I'm not like pretending to be someone. I, I am this person. Being able to connect with a farmer yourself and being able to have that relationship could build a lot of community. There's cool events happening at so many farms throughout LA volunteering your time, cooking cool recipes with friends, following posts on social media. It's getting easier and easier to, to get involved. People have a lot of purchasing power and by supporting local businesses like farms, they can say that's what we want and it doesn't have to be by really big corporations and that a couple people can make a big difference. I studied computer science with a specialty on robotics and when I was doing that I was really most excited about producing a self-replicating farm and manufacturing plant. You know, this system could be dropped off somewhere and then start growing itself, grow abundance for the population. And then basically I realized, you know, you don't, don't really need the robots for that. That same concept we've taken and said like, okay, let's just use it to plan and communicate these concepts so that um, you know we can partner with any business that we're really excited to. So that when you go to the URL uh, sustaina.world, um, you you know you can connect with local businesses that are really um, trying their best to make a difference. People are always asking me gardening questions, and I love just sharing what I know for free. It feels like there's no limit to how much you can 
create richness close to home.